Once again, a very good morning to you, brothers and sisters. We like to especially uh, welcome you to join us as we uh, look into the Word of God this morning. In fact, today is the uh, first Sunday in the month of March, and uh, in line with the uh, theme of the church, uh, we are focusing a little bit on an uh, emphasis on missions in this year. Now, I think middle of last year, we were uh, doing this uh, missions convention. And the mission theme that we have set for these 12 months, including this uh, period that we're in, is chosen, sent, now go. And this was the uh, theme that has its basis in a scripture found in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. I was particularly touched in a sense that as I was reading this scripture and asking the Lord, Lord, what is it that I, are you able to, am I able to see from this scripture? And the Lord showed me these three words as we read. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all towns and places He planned to visit. These were His instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask Him to send more workers in the fields. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. In this particular passage of Scripture, the three words that stood out for me, especially in the New Living Translation, was this word chosen, sent, now go. And this became the emphasis of our mission for the year 2020-2021. And brothers and sisters, it has been a very, very different season, if you like. Because during this particular time, you know, especially this last uh, seven, uh, well, almost a whole year already, we've not been able to send people overseas. And yet, at the same time, our people who are overseas are also not able to interact with us or in a, in a physical sense. Because in the past, when we send mission teams out, we have a chance for our brothers and sisters from the church here to interact with our brothers and sisters and those serving in the different uh, areas, like what you saw in the video earlier on. Now, we, we thank God in the past where our teams were able to go out they were able to interact with the locals. And I know that many, an individual that has gone, have decided to go, right, and to participate in the mission of God. They have come back changed. And so, brothers and sisters, during this particular season where we have not really been able to send our people out, but yet at the same time, there are already our mission workers out there as well as them, as well as the teams that are serving in the fields there. So, when I look at this in particular, I look at missions in the new norm. To my mind, the commission is still go. We still need to go because that is the essence of the, uh, the mission of God. Jesus Christ was sent from heaven coming down to earth. And so, brothers and sisters, what I want to encourage us is as we think about this word, the commission is still go, right? It goes back onto the basis of the Bible because the last time I looked, the Bible hasn't changed. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, where Jesus told the disciples, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. And so, having said that, brothers and sisters, I was, I was doing a devotion the other day and, um, and one of these uh, uh, mission devotions that I was doing had this uh, uh, quotation from a, a pastor and a mission leader called Mike Satura. He said this, he says that the mark of a great church is not its seating capacity, but its sending capacity. And I think that really hits home to me, over my years serving together with the brothers and sisters, especially those whom we have sent from here 
out into the mission field and how they are multiplying their life into the lives of others. And this morning, even as we consider missions in this area, we're going to look at the sending capacity of the church. How or what have we been doing? I remember last year I coined this hashtag, Challenges Present Opportunities. And as I, I, as I review back this Missions Emphasis Week, I, I, I look at this and I said, Lord, what have we been doing? And honestly, brothers and sisters, in the local front of our local aspect of missions, there have been continual world small group outreaches, especially toward the indigenous people group. And also, of course, with the onset of uh, um, technology, online technology, right, we have been able to contact the disciples of this indigenous church, be they in uh, Cameron Highlands or whether they are in uh, uh, Sarawak. Yeah? And, and so this has been ongoing. And our people have been uh, really working very hard to try to structure something that is bite-sized, something that can be shared heart-to-heart over the online platform. But nevertheless, what have we been doing in missions? I will elaborate further after this. But on the overseas side, we've also been doing the, uh, the visitation programs. Yeah? They have also been affected by the pandemic. They were also locked down in, some, uh, in certain uh, uh, seasons. But we thank God that you know, the, uh, the, the participants you know, that, that of, of, our, uh, of our ministry we've been able to do small group visitations to consolidate the work that we have. You know, in every, in every uh, uh, season, right, or in every uh, process, we have gone through planting, but yet we've also gone through some con- uh, consolidation work. And this has been a season where we have done some consolidation of uh, the participants uh, that we are engaged with in our programs overseas. And of course, just as similarly, how many of the people here have been affected economically? Our people that are in touch with the villages over there in uh, the, the foreign countries that we are, we are in, especially in Samal Island and even in, uh, in Simrip, you know, we've also uh, gone on a grocery provision program, a distribution program. We will show you afterwards. And so, while... We have been locked down in our respective countries, not able to travel out. We thank God that God has already placed our people over there. And this season, we have been able to do more things on a, on, at the ground level and very concentrated. And so, what are the local initiatives that has happened in this new norm? You know, a lot of us had a lot of time uh, given to us suddenly because we, we, we are not able to go to work fully. We're not able to do a lot of things. But nevertheless, you know, what we thank God that we are able to, to, to engage the community during this season. And as a result, we started our Kanka Pulai Bahasa Malaysia Speaking Church starting in October. And of course, uh, right now, they are just following us on the online platform because of the uh, lockdown. But nevertheless, you know, we already started and we had about three months of uh, services amidst all the, 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 the uncertainties of whether you can have uh, physical services or online services. And you know, groups have, uh, small groups have been going out, reaching out to the local indigenous communities. And as a result, you know, in uh, Desa Chumalang and uh, even the uh, Kuala Masai area, we've been able to reach out to the local indigenous people. I want to show you some photographs. If you see on the slides there, this is our uh, church that we uh, were able to start in the month of October 2020. You know, church started a service there. We thank God for a partnership with uh, an existing Tamil church in that area. You know, and this Tamil church that we are partnering with, they have a premises there, and they were very open to let us use these premises. And you know, God was so good that 
you know, when we had our Thanksgiving, the, the first initial service, you know, the, the, the senior pastor of this Tamil church, they came with a group of them and they, they, were so, they were so thankful, right, that they were able to be a co-partner in planting a Bahasa Malaysia speaking church. And over these uh, few months that we were able to have that, we had a about congregation about 30 to 35 people and a lot of young people. And you know, thank, we, are, we are really thankful for that fact that we are able to already reach out to that area. And in fact, brothers and sisters, already there are many uh, good contacts being made in this area. We, thank, we, are, we, are, we are continually praying that God will extend and, and, and uh, the, the connections with the community over there. In fact, last uh, December, during the Christmas season, you know, we had the opportunity to baptize six of them from this church. Yeah? And together with the other congregation, we were able to baptize almost, almost uh, 20 people last Christmas. Indeed, it was a very meaningful time for us to realize that God is working, God is still working, and God will continually work in the midst of us. Now, in the local setting, some of the people gave us some contacts, and we, we were able to reach out to an Orang Asli group in Kuala Masai area. And as a result, there's two families that are now doing some discipling uh, processes. You know, they've already accepted Jesus Christ. They opened their heart. You know, and... and and God is really, you know, uh, touching this community. Now, we thank God for the brothers that is able to go and reach out and do this discipling work and, and, and building that trust with this community. Also, last uh, uh, August to uh, September, you know, we had the opportunity to, uh, to start uh, reaching out to a group of uh, indigenous people in the desert Chamalang area. You know, in the industrial area there, there's... Uh, there's a lot of uh, East Malaysians staying there too. And as a result of that outreach work, you know, one of our sisters in the church and our cell group got together to reach out. And out of that, we were able to baptize eight people, you know, from three families during that time. Albeit, you know, we know that God is working. And so we are partnering with Him, brothers and sisters. And this is the, the work that we are continuing to do, not just... Because, you know, uh, it's MCO or we can't do this, we can't do that. But, you know, brothers and sisters, challenges presents opportunities. And so much so that the church also participated in a lot of outreach work, distributing grocery boxes and touching many, many families. I think we already shared this in our community report, you know, but this is some of the uh, activities that we've been doing to be able to reach out and touch lives across the, uh, the, the, the local scene. When we can't go overseas, we keep going locally. Amen? And you and I are participants in our prayers. You and I are participants in our giving. You and I are participants in our going as well. And so, brothers and sisters, that is the missions in the, in the new norm for at the local setting. However, as I have been communicating with our, our co-workers in the uh, Philippines and uh, Cambodia, and i just give you a little back, background of the work that we started in Philippines. Since launched in 1997, right, we started the X program in uh, Samal Island in 2006. And as we raised local workers, then uh, our sister Angela moved over to Cambodia. And then in uh, 2013, we started the Simrip X program, right? And uh, as a result of that X program in uh, Simrip, we started the River of Life Church and as well as a training uh, center called Men of Dignity Center. Now, this is the, just a very, very brief background of the work that we are doing in these two countries. However, during the pandemic, many opportunities arise as well. Because you see, brothers and sisters, when over there, we are sponsoring students to go to school. The schools were also affected, right? Because the, there was lockdown, right? But you know, we know that many of these villagers, a lot of them live from hand to mouth. 
meaning whatever they can catch during the day, that will determine how much food that they have. And without the students going to school, right, and, uh, and, and, and there's restriction of movement, a lot of them were not able to fend for themselves. Yes, we thank God that in this area of Samal, the uh, local government had been able to provide some form of groceries yeah, and support. But when we went to visit and, and, and touch base with our uh, sponsored students and their families, we also realized the gravity of the need. And as a result, we were able to send some surplus funds over to them so that they, together with the local community, were able to reach out. They supplied groceries to the community during this season as well. And we thank God that as a result, you know, one or two families have been actually really, really, you know, touched by the love of God in this area. Similarly, in, the, uh, in, a, uh, in a Simrip, you know, uh, probably in the area of Simrip, they were not as badly affected, but they were also locked down for a period of time. And, uh, you know, and then when we wanted to restart, we, there were also a lot of issues relating to uh, the, the, the uh, SOPs that had to be carried out. But nevertheless, brothers and sisters, our mission workers, our brothers and sisters in Simrip continue to go out in small groups, right? Utilizing the, 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 what is, whatever is available to them. And as you can see in the slide there, you know, they, they do small group visitations and touch the lives of the students. And at the same time, because they are visiting the students in their homes, right, they were able to also reach out to the families. And you know, there are many, many good connections that have been made during this time. Now, these are the activities that are still carrying on in despite of the restrictions that we have. And we know that, you know, we are complying with the restrictions, keeping safe, but yet at the same time, not forgetting the commission to go. The commission to go, brothers and sisters, doesn't stop because of the circumstances. The commission to go continue to spur us on to do the good works because God is working amongst the people. Amen? And so, during this particular moment, I want to share with you in my last few minutes of the time that I have with you, talking about the discipling work. Because you see, brothers and sisters, you know, we were not meant to live our life alone. You know, our, our, our life is not just to accept Jesus Christ and wait to go to heaven. We know that as we are here, on earth, we build relationships. We strengthen the bonds of family, the bonds of uh, brotherhood with brothers and sisters serving together. And in, especially so in a mission field, this verse is very, very prevalent. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. It says here, A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. You know, my brothers and my sisters, in the last 20 years that I've been uh, serving the mission fields as, the, as the, the, the coordinator of the local at the local front here, you know, I realized that the partnership that we build along, uh, along the way with the people along in the, in the mission area, right? definitely lends credence to this word that says that three are even better for a three triple braided cord is not easily broken. When you have people working alongside with you, when there are people walking together with you in serving, that becomes an added bonus. You know, just uh, I, I think it was yesterday, I read in Leviticus chapter 26, and it says that, if five people can withstand 100 or can chase down 100 people, talk about enemy, you know? And then the 100 people can chase away 10,000 people. And, and, and that verse gives me the idea that when we are more people bound together to a common mission, there's a lot more that we can achieve. And so, brothers and sisters, when I look at the discipleship network, 
that is being propagated in the mission field. And especially last a few years, I've been looking at how we can progress on. I look at the work that we've been doing in Philippines and look at the work that we've been doing in Cambodia. Now, many of you know Sister Angela. And in fact, for Sister Angela, you know, that we sent her out a number of years ago, right? Of course, she does come back every now and then. But you know, together with her husband, RG, they've been serving on a mission field. But at the same time, she had been able to build a network of people, a network of disciples that can serve together with her. Now, this discipleship network is very important. And so in preparation for this, uh, this, uh, this uh, message that I was sharing today, I'm sharing with you today, I asked, the three of, I asked four of them who are people that have been serving together. I said, can you give me three things that you learned during this season? And Sister Angela wrote and she said, you know, the first thing she said that it's God's best at all times. Right place and right season. At first she was wondering why did she go back to Samal and then cannot come out. No, she's been back in Samal Island for over a year. But God has a plan and a purpose far beyond her her, her imagination because she wanted, always wanted to get back to uh, Cambodia because that's where her, uh, her current field is. But Lord God allowed her to stay there for a season and for a good reason. The second thing she said, you know, she had a heart filled with thanksgiving because we were able to spend a lot of time with her husband and their baby and their son. No more baby. You know, used to be a baby. Yeah? And they say that, that she is spending a lot of quality time with the family. And this, this is a, 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 a thought that she has, a gratitude that God allowed it so that they can spend precious time building the family. And the third thing she says that even though she's so far away from Cambodia and yes, there is communication through internet, but one of the things she saw was the duplication of the leadership in the foreign land. Yeah? And I, I put this, the third point, is this, that the third thing that she learned is that life impacts life. She had to operate from a distance away from Cambodia, which is her main field. But she was able to see the level of leadership rise at the local front of these two persons I will talk about later. This was three things she learned during this season. As for her husband, RG, you know, he was managing the, the uh, uh, River of Life Church in Simrip, but now he's away. The pastor is away from the church. And you know, three things he said. The first was, even though there was uncertainty, he realized that God is so faithful. And God was able to, you know, at times when they can still communicate with the people in uh, Simrip, he was so thankful that the work and the, the discipleship and the evangelism was still in progress. But one of the things he was also, like Angela, was able to, to, to really reflect on is to treasure the great moments with her family, with his family. And indeed, you know, sometimes it can get busy that we can neglect time with the family. And very soon they grow up. But he says, I treasure the moments that I have with my little family. And of course, the third thing he says, you know, he, he believes that greater things are ahead. And that's why he's seeking God in, in preparation. He says in one of, the, one of the Psalms that really hit him was Psalm 63. And particularly verse 8, he says, My soul follows close behind you, God. Your right hand upholds me. He had a desire to seek God, that God will, will, will prepare him for the days that are coming ahead. Now the other two persons are the ones that are in Cambodia even though they are Filipinos, but they were part of the disciples that have been raised. And here I'm talking about Vizel Jane, who's commonly known as Indian. 
she has become like the, the administrative leader of, uh, of, of, of the work that we have in uh, Simrip because Angela is in Samal. But we thank God that over this season, she said three things. Number one, she began to appreciate the little things. The small little things in life. Number two, she begins to realize that, you know, as they begin to build into the people, people grow, the ministry grows. And I think sometimes we take all these things for granted. We think that, oh, that's normal, what? You know, but sometimes in our busyness of doing the work, we forget to invest time in the people. And, and when she mentioned this, it reflected upon my own life too. And she has really stepped up into the leadership. She's leadership in progress. But you know, brothers and sisters, she has matured so much beyond her years managing the, the ministry there during this season. And I really thank God for her. And she's also supported by, his, uh, by her, uh, her lovely husband, Junma. This young man, you know, I always still remember he was such a... Uh, 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 personality when he was a st uh, student, you know. But when he took that challenge over these last few years, I, I saw the way that he has matured. And as he wrote in his reflection, the three things, you know, he says, you know, there was one thing that he saw during this pandemic that's limitation. You cannot do this, cannot do this, cannot do that. But yet, he used these words and says, even though through that limitation, it does not restrict God's provision. God provided the ministry that He was doing right, with, uh, with the challenges and the ministry that was doing was able to do expansion even though there was limitation. The second thing He says that the limitation did not restrict Him from leading and implementing because He was tasked to take over the ministry of the uh, River of Life Church and he began to be challenged. And he realized that even though he was limited by the restriction movement and all that, but God opened his heart, opened, uh, 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 took him beyond his abilities. Which leads us to the third point, that that limitation did not hinder the multiplication of his talent. As I read his reflection, I can't help but remember, you know, the, the parable of the talents in the book of Matthew chapter 25. How God multiplied the ministry, multiplied the talents for those who are faithful. And I saw that, you know, this young man decided that he will not hide his talent, but he will surrender it unto the Lord, including all that he can and all that he cannot do, Right? And God multiplied that talent. And so, brothers and sisters, I see that the building of the discipleship network had been a very critical aspect of the missions in the new norm. And this will continue, brothers and sisters, because disciples will make disciples. Amen? That is what we are called to do. We're not just going out there to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor, the good news to those who are oppressed. Yes, after they accept, right? Once they believe in the power of Jesus Christ, let us walk with them to be able to make more and more disciples. And so one of the critical points that I want to share with you is that in missions, one of the first Chinese words I learned in missions was this word, xie zu. And this word, I already mentioned this before last year when I shared this in the, uh, in the English service. But this traditional character has a cross, right? And has three uh, 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 sub-characters, right? Which means strength. And the word siachu means to assist, to aid, or to support. And really, when I think about it, we all need the spiritual strength. We all need the uh, human resource. We all need the financial provision. All these three are very, very necessary. And we thank God that our connection with God, our Heavenly Father, through His Word, through the spiritual 
uh, 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 resources has been a source of strength for our brothers and sisters. The human resource is out there. They are doing there. They are, they are discipling at the same time as they serve together. Yeah? But the third one, which is the financial provision. Now, the cross is aided by all these three resources. And in order to advance, right? Sorry. Just can't seem to get this thing to work properly. In order for the cross to advance, okay, we must have all these three resources. And so, brothers and sisters, from here, we see the, the, the importance of all three aspects of this area of spiritual, human, and financial resources in the ministry. And so, the last one I want to talk about is the financial. We know that money is the one that helps to bring forth some of these expenses that we have on the field. And we thank God, I show you this uh, missions uh, budget. Okay? Now, last year, we, our budget for this uh, period is 870000 Okay? And what happened is that subsequently, after about two months after uh, the month of July, you know, we, 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 we reminded brothers and sisters to put in their pledges. Okay? And we only got about $343,000 worth of pledges. Okay? That means they pledged they haven't, uh, they, they are, and, and they committed to give. But you know, brothers and sisters, what is amazing is that while the pledges is so low, right, up to date, we have received well over the number, uh, the amount that was pledged. Yeah? And so, brothers and sisters, I share with you this, that even though our budget is 870000 the giving to date for the seven months has reached 529,894. I want to give God all the praise and all the glory. It is all the brothers and sisters who have been continually giving, right? And yet, for the next five months, we are still in need of about 340,000. And so, brothers and sisters, I just want to share with you that the financial provision, right, is oftentimes channeled through the giving of you, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you have given one off. Some of you have given consistently every month. And we thank God for all of you. But if you find it in your heart this morning, as you, as you hear that what's been going on on the fields, we know that all this cannot go on without the faithful giving of our brothers and sisters. And I, cons I, I, and I beseech you, as Paul would say, my brethren, you know, to continue giving unto the Lord so that the work of missions can advance. Shall we pray? Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, this morning I want to thank You because You've given us this opportunity to understand that regardless of what the circumstances are, whether it's a new norm or an old norm, You are still God over the missions. And so Father, I thank You that as the people who hears Your Word this morning, May they continually be challenged to know you as a God. For with you, God, nothing is impossible. For with you, God, you have chosen us, you have sent us, you are asking us to go forth. And going forth through our prayers, through our giving, and also through our individually going. And so, Father, we thank you for the opportunity that our brothers and sisters are hearing this morning in that, Lord, you will speak to them, to, sp uh, to, to specify to them exactly what they should be doing, how they should be communicating, how should they be offering themselves, because we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you again next time.